Welcome to What God Can Do Ministries. Uh, it's great to have you listening, and I trust that God will bless you. I want to just read from the authorized version. Um, Paul writes to Timothy and says, Thou hast fully known in, in chapter 3, verse 10, my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learnt. Um, and, you know, I love this scripture because here we have um, Paul writing and he's saying, look, everyone who will live godly in Christ Jesus is going to suffer persecution. Now, I thought, you know, when I first came to Christ, that everyone in the church would support the truth and people outside the church would be the persecutors, the world. But what I found when I came to Christ was it was the religious people and church people that are the worst persecutors of all. And um, Paul goes on and says, evil men and seducers. Now, how do they seduce? They seduce with false doctrine. They seduce with lies. They seduce with words that don't come from God. They seduce people by taking scriptures and combining scriptures and taking them out of context and making their filthy doctrines. And they seduce people and they wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, how can I avoid deception and being deceived? Simple. One thing I do, when someone mentions a scripture verse to me, I immediately go to my Bible and I look at the context of it. It's important. Who was it said to? Why was it said? When was it said? And for what purpose was it spoken? Now, if you look at those things first of all, and you take it in the context of the whole, you realize that most false doctrines which deceive people come from the Bible, but they're taken out of context. It's so easy for people to take a Strong's or a Young's concordance, take a subject, and then string verses together and make a doctrine that has no biblical base, except for verses taken out of context. And it is so evil, and it seduces people, because they sound so knowledgeable. I heard of a, a man in London who writes, you know, a long treatise and quotes scripture after scripture after scripture. Let me give you an example, uh, which I've said before. Look, uh, Naaman was a leper. Now, he sent to Elisha, and, and he was sent there by the king. When he came, he was told to go dip in Jordan. Now, dipping in Jordan was to cleanse leprosy. It wasn't to deal with sin. It wasn't to deal with bondage. It was to cleanse leprosy. He didn't like the idea. Uh, a maid servant said, look, uh, go and do it. I mean, can't you be humble enough? And when he did, of course, he was cleansed. Now, the man thought the man of God would come and smite him on the chest and his leprosy will go, no. He just sent his servant, Casey, he said, go and, go and dip in Jordan, all right? Now, do understand this. That was a genuine thing, but it is not the cure for leprosy today. Uh, now, I can take that and say, but it's in the Bible. Every promise of God is yea and amen. Yeah, every promise of God that was spoken in the power of the Spirit into my spirit applies to me in the context, but it's not a cure for leprosy. And so many people think they can claim things 
and they take words out of context and make a claim and make shipwreck because God will not do what he hasn't spoken in truth, in context. And during your lifetime and my lifetime, I've had God speak to me. God said things to me. But I want to say this, that it's always in the context of what's happening in my life at that present time. Doesn't mean because he speaks to me one time, it's a formula. So many people take what a man of God has said and then they make it a formula, a methodology. No, God will come and when he speaks, it's original. When he speaks, it's biblical. When he speaks, it's with power and might and it performs the word he sent it to do for the purpose he sent it to do with the power he sent within it. The word is sure. It won't return to him void. But if it doesn't work in your life, don't think by fasting and praying you're going to make it work. When God speaks, it's done. It's eternal. So do understand what God is saying. Hey, I want to know the context. When you see someone quoting scripture, go back to your Bible. Look at the context. Who was it spoken to? Why was it spoken? What was the purpose of that word? Does it apply? Has God quickened that word to my heart? Is it real for me? And if it is, it will accomplish what God sent it to do. But if it's just dead letter, what's going to happen is nothing's going to work. I've seen dear people ill with cancer and someone's gone to them and prophesied over them and then they claim they're healed, refuse all medical help at, until they die. That is suicide. Hey, I believe you fight disease with medicine. I believe you fight it with prayer. I believe you fight it with the power of the Spirit. But I want to tell you this. I've seen miracle after miracle. I've seen God open blind eyes. I've seen God heal cancers. I've seen God do many wonderful things raise people out of wheelchairs, uh, raise people from their deathbed. But I've also seen those who haven't been raised. If God doesn't speak it and do it, it won't happen. I was over in um, Cameroon recently, a year or so ago, and I remember um, at one of the meetings, beautiful miracles happened for three days, and then they sent me a note, one of the pastors at the night meeting, and, and um, he said he'd like to speak to me. He came and said, look, uh, a man's died, he's an old man, he died, and they're bringing his body to the meeting tomorrow for you to raise him from the dead. I said, hold hard. I said, just a minute, if God tells me to pray for him, I'll pray for him. But if not, you make sure that He's at the back of the meeting. If God speaks to me, I will go and I will pray and God will do what he promised to do. But if he doesn't speak to me, get the undertaker, bury him. Uh, I wasn't going to be put in a position where I was going to challenge God. And if God doesn't speak to me, I'm not going to do it. Because I believe it's God who does the miracle and if he doesn't do it, won't get done. Jesus said, what I hear the Father say, that's what I say. What I see the Father do, that's what I do. He said, of myself I can do nothing. And some preachers need to learn that principle and live by it. And you need to learn it and live by it. The Bible's a wonderful book and we always need to go back to the scripture and check it and read it and then believe the God who wrote it. God bless you. May God keep you.